Pat with Pat's Two Cents, reading Luke chapter 7. Yes, verse 11. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the briar. And they that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. Now, this is Pat's two cents. So now, he's working a tremendous miracle of resurrection power. And everybody is seeing this. There's a point to this. I, that's why I wanted to read this. Many of you are seeing other people get their blessings. Many of you are seeing other people get other people get their blessings. Okay. And you're waiting for your moment when you're going to get yours. And you start asking questions in your mind. And the devil starts playing with your mind while you're watching others get theirs and you're still waiting on yours. Listen. All right. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the briar, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, that a great prophet has risen up upon us and that God had visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John showed him all of these things. And John calling unto him, two of his disciples sent them to Jesus saying, Check this question out, y'all. Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in the same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits and unto many that were blind he gave sight then jesus answered said unto them go your way and tell john what things ye have seen and heard how that the blind see the lame walk the lepers are cleansed <clears throat> The deaf hear, the dead are raised to the poor, the gospel is preached. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. We do not realize, that's the bottom line right there. We do not realize how easily we get offended in Christ. And you wonder, well, how do I get offended? I believe in him. I ask them to forgive me for my sins. I'm walking the walk. I'm talking the talk. I'm doing the do. But listen, many of us do not realize how we revel in jealousy. Jealousy is very subtle. Jealousy is very, uh, it's, it's, it's almost like a phantom. You don't really see it, but it's there big time. And it affects everything you do, everything you say, every way that you react to what's going on around you. Now, you notice Jesus did not send an answer to John immediately. He let John's disciples walk with him as he did that many more miracles. You notice that. He didn't send them back right away with an answer. He let them eyewitness what Jesus was doing 
so they could speak with authority. This is the one, y'all. I saw it with my own two eyes. And he took his time. Because sometimes God, oh, it's he's not being cruel. Sometimes God rubs in our face his sovereignty. He wants to remind us, I am not your bellhop. I will not jump when you snap your finger. I'll not come running every time you drop a tear and you utter a cry. I am sovereign and I know what I'm doing. My timing is in my hands, not yours. My wisdom is in me, not in your desires. And there are times we want God to hop, skip, and jump now. Do it now. Do it yesterday. What's taking you so long? Are you the one? Or should I just look for another? Should I look to Buddha? Should I look to Muhammad? Who should I look at? Because you're taking your time. Don't look like you're thinking about me, Lord. I don't know about this. I've been walking with you for years. I'm bored the heat of the day. Oh, man, I've been through trials. I cried out to you. And I don't get why you're not jumping to my tomb right now. So are you it or should I look for another? Should I look elsewhere for my answers? Hmm. Yeah. That's how we get. We get attitude, fat attitude toward God because we don't like waiting on the Lord. Like I always call it, we have a microwave religion. Everything must be heated instantly. Everything must be ready, quick, fast, in a hurry. Because we are a society of people who feel like we are uh, supposed to have this and we're supposed to have that. We're spoiled. We are privileged. And as a result of being privileged, we believe that, that we should not have to stand in line. We should not have to be delayed because of traffic. We have somewhere to go, so everyone must get out of my way. I've got things to do, places to go, people to see. Right. And you feel entitled. It's a sense of entitlement, especially Americans. We are privileged and we feel a sense of entitlement. How dare I have to wait? No. So are you it, Lord? Why am I waiting? You can wave your magic wand and do what I told you to do. I mean, asked you to do. Yeah, right. But you're really telling them. You're really putting out orders. Many of you, when you pray to God, you're putting out an order. Now, the reason, if you're wondering why John even asked that question, knowing Jesus from his childhood, because they were cousins, knowing this, knowing who he was, why Jesus was on the scene, when he baptized them, heard God speak out of heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased saw the Spirit of God descend on Jesus as if it were a dove. Saw all that, heard all that. Now he's in prison, getting ready to have his head chopped off. Now the question arises, are you really him? Or should I have been looking for another? Was I looking the wrong way when I looked towards you for my answer? What's up with this? I'm getting ready to die here. You're a blood relative. You ain't doing nothing to come to my rescue. I'm just going to die? Yep. That's just what he was there to do. Die. And that is what happens to us as born again Christians. We get told the lie. When you get saved, everything's going to be hunky-dory. Everything's going to be joyful, playful, joyful, joyful. We adore thee. Da, 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 da. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And you know you're telling a lie. 
I'm not saying it's a lie that God is good, but you know you don't feel that way all the time because many of you feel disappointed in God. Many of you are offended by God. I served you, Lord. I preached the word for 30 years and you let my husband die. You let my child die. You let my mama die. You let my father die. But I prayed otherwise. How come? And God rubs in your face. I, I am, am, am sovereign. sovereign. My, my ways, ways are above, above your ways. ways. And my, and my thoughts, thoughts above, above your, your thoughts. thoughts. Hmm. Hmm. We don't like that. We're a privileged society. Entitlement. Well, I should get better. I'm a child of the Most High King. I get the best. No, sometimes you're a child of the Most High King and you get the worst. How do you know that? Because the disciples talked about being beaten, being thrown in jail for doing the will of God. The disciples talked about how they had to learn to abound and how they had to learn to abase and all those things be satisfied, be content with and be content when they're doing without. But we want a Santa Claus for God. We don't want to know what it feels like to have a car repossessed. We don't want to know what it feels like to have a house go into foreclosure. All that says to me is, hey, you know, God's abandoning me. Where were you in my hour of need? Are you really him or should I look for another? That's where we go and I walk with the Lord. The first sign of trouble. And we're pointing the finger, our little bony finger up at God. Instead of blaming ourselves for not taking care of business, because many of us lose things because we buy things rather than paying bills. Think about it now. Many of us are knee deep in debt because we're so busy consuming, we forget to take care of our own business. Many of us will go out and buy a whole bunch of goodies and have folks over and have all kinds of fun and take trips and buy clothes and buy shoes. And we got closets full of shoes and can't pay a light bill. Now that doesn't mean that all of you are in that category. Some people are victims of circumstance. And when you are a victim of circumstance, there is something you are to learn in that circumstance. And sometimes God allows you to do without to see if you will still walk with him when everything isn't going your way. That's called a test and a trial. He even said out of his own mouth to see if you would obey me and follow me or no. So there are many times life brings tests and trials and God has taken our temperature. He's taken the litmus test to see how much of him we really have in our hearts or how much of us we're full of. You see what I'm saying? Life is not always going to be a bowl of cherries, y'all. Life is not always going to be loaded with whipped cream. There are times you're going to feel like the woman that went to Jesus and asked him to touch her daughter or her child. And she said, even the dogs eat the crumbs from the table. There are times your life will be full of crumbs, y'all. It doesn't mean that God is not fulfilling his promises. As long as you're on the face of this earth, you are vulnerable to the elements. Many are the troubles of man, but God delivers them out of them all. One way or another, you will be delivered. The quicker you stop complaining, the quicker you praise him in it, not for it, but in it, the quicker you seek his face to see what you're to learn through it, even about yourself the quicker you'll get out of it. Pull that bottom lip in, hold your chin up, and keep the faith, baby. Keep believing. 
when it seems like all hell is breaking loose and you're dragging your faith, your faith, F-A-I-T-H, along the ground and shadows are all around. Keep that faith. Don't let go of that faith. Whatever you do, that's what's going to bring you through. Your faith in God. See, even John said in, in um, I mean, Jesus said in John 14, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. Mm. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not true, I would have told you. You see, God is trying to get us to believe what he says. No matter what's going on in our lives. There are times many of you get angry at God because God took your child for, with cancer. God took your child in leukemia. And you serving God, you walking the straight and narrow. And now you feel abandoned by him. You're offended. Or maybe I ought to be looking elsewhere. Look what God did for me. Well, guess what? I bet your child is happy that they didn't have to stay here and keep going through and keep going through so you could just have your child with you. No. Jesus is merciful. And there are many times the most merciful thing God can do is take your loved one to be with him rather than stuck here in a suffering body of flesh full of pain, full of agonizing needles and treatments and hospital stays, poking and prodding. Yeah, they'd much rather be with the Lord than be stuck down here with you. Sounds cold. But I know one thing I told the Lord years ago, when this body thinks about breaking down, take me on home. I don't want to live an old life in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Somebody praying for me to stay here so they can feel happy to have me with them. No, love me enough to pray God take me home quick, quick, fast, in a hurry. Love your loved ones enough to let them go. It ain't about you. I had to let my husband go and I told him so, so he wouldn't feel obligated to hang on. Listen, trust God in life and trust God in death. Trust God in health and trust God in sickness. Trust God in, in, in abundance and trust God in poverty. In every phase of your life, in the ups and downs, you are to learn, you are to glean wisdom, you are to glean insights. There are some things you can't learn in the daylight. You can only learn in the dark. So when God is rubbing his sovereignty in your face and you can't do anything about the situation, sit back, you might as well rest in him and say, Lord, show me what you want me to learn from this. Develop in me what you want to grow in me. Help me to develop and become the person you have created me to be. Don't let me miss the lessons that I am to learn in this dark season. For you, No matter what life throws at you, no matter what demons do to you, God is for you, not against you. Don't drop the ball. Don't run off the court and quit in the middle of the game because you're disappointed that he didn't come through the way you want him to do it and when you wanted him to do it. Don't ask him, are you the one or should I look for another? Ask God to adjust your attitude. Admit how you feel. Admit how you're thinking and ask God to remove it so you could go through this thing and come out on the other end as quickly as possible. God bless you as you learn to trust him no matter what. I just feel right now I got to add this. 
If it comes to the point where you are facing a guillotine, because of your faith in Christ, when it comes to the point where you have to do without food and you have to do without many items in your life because you don't take the mark of the beast, that's coming to me right now. You have to be girded up through life circumstances so when that happens, you have enough resolve to say, whether I live or whether I die, God is my God. Like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, when they were facing the fire, the fiery furnace. If we live, we live. If we die, we die. Bottom line, what is your statement going to be when you're facing all odds working against you in these last days? I'm done. God bless you. That's your challenge.